been busy with work and I haven't been able to really do any videos but I'm bringing you something a little different today um, actually should I say this evening um, it's probably about 10 it's a little over 10 o'clock uh, in the evening right now and um, I've got a pool party to go to and I promised that I would bring a brisket so that's what I'm gonna do today in today's video I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna smoke this 16 pound prime brisket. So, first thing we gotta do, let's get it out of this wrapper. So today, I um, ended up going to this store that I've never been to. Um, it's storing here in South Oklahoma City. It's called U.S. Foods. And it's kind of like a, uh, it's basically like a Sam's Club um, for restaurant supplies and stuff like that. But you don't have to have a membership, which is really nice. And supposedly they claim it's wholesale prices. So um, that's awesome. But I got this, this uh, prime brisket, 16 pounds for $6 a pound. Uh, so it came out to be just a little over 90 bucks um, and lately it's been pretty hard to to find a prime brisket um, a lot of places around here it's either choice or select and I didn't want either one of those so um, what I'm going to do today is I'm going to this evening I'm going to trim up this brisket for you all, kind of show you how I do it. Um, there's different ways to do it. There's not any wrong way to do it, but I do like to wipe it down before I start trimming. All right, so since the fat cap is gonna be the demonstration side, I'm gonna flip this bad boy over and I'm going to start on the meat side. For my lather, I always use just plain yellow mustard. Just give that a good lather. Get it all on all the sides. Okay. A good lather on all sides. Okay. So first one I'm going to do is I'm going to do black pepper. And this one is a 30, number 30 coarse black pepper. And I'm, like I said, I'm going to apply these separate just so I can control how much I'm putting on. It's not the pepper that I have to worry about, it's that, it's that salt. Because my last brisket turned out to just be a little too salty. So put some black pepper on here. Okay. That looks good. Just get all the sides, of course. I like the thick, coarse pepper. Um, some people like to use um, a, a less coarse pepper. Um, I like the coarseness just because it gives a little more um, 
character, I guess. The bark kind of, I like how the bark builds up when it's a, a thicker pepper. Um, then, the next one I'm gonna put on is the garlic. And so what I'm using here is just minced garlic from McCormick's, something simple. Now I won't use a whole lot of garlic, I'll just, but I am gonna use some. That's looking good. The next one I'm going to put on is just a coarse sea salt. This is the one I have a feeling um, I think I have a feeling I just put a little too much on or when I use the shaker bottle um, with all the ingredients together I feel like this is the one that really gave too much salt. So I'm going to just do a light coating of salt. Okay. Light coating of sea salt. Um, and then I'm going to come in with Lowry's. And what I'll do with Lowry's, I'll do another light coat of, of Lowry's. And I'll do it, the Lowry's on the edges. I think Lowry's is the game changer. And I'm liking how this is applying. I'm just able to control it. Control how much I want to put on. You know? Okay, that is looking good. That is looking real good. Okay, so I'm just gonna give this a pat. Pat this in. Okay, that's looking good. Pat all the edges. Let's make sure it's nice and set it. Okay, so I'm gonna flip this over. And let's do the, the fat cap side. And this is, like I said, this is gonna be the presentation side. I didn't wanna put I don't want to mess up this side, so I didn't want to rub it and then flip it over and then the rub get uneven or me mixed up, messed up or whatever, so. Okay, a little, little bit of mustard. Hey, and anybody that's watching this, if you've got any pointers or you know, things that I, you think that I may be doing wrong or anything like that, dude, let me know in the comments below because, like I said, I'm, I'm new to barbecuing, um, new to smoking, um, and so I'm always learning, and that's, and that's one of the things that I love about this is, is learning, so, okay, so we've got that, that mustard on, let's put some black pepper on this bad boy. My wife, if she saw me doing this, she'd be like, ew, black pepper grounds. Yeah, but you still like the brisket. We'll put black pepper on it in the past. And you weren't complaining. Okay. I'm liking that. Okay, that looks good. Black pepper's on. Now, with the garlic. A little bit of garlic. Okay. Looking good, looking good. Now on the cap side, what I'm gonna do is I'm not gonna put sea salt. I'm gonna just use just flowers. Now this is a first for me, so hopefully it turns out alright, but Lowry's only.
Sorry for the helicopters, guys. But all right, I live next close to a hospital, and they're always flying the helicopters in. Okay, let's press that in, and let's let this sit. I'm gonna let this sit for a little bit while we get the smoker going. All right, so tonight um, I'm gonna be smoking this on the Z Grills pellet smoker. Um, it's my first pellet smoker. Yeah, it's my first smoker in general, um, and I really enjoy it. Uh, being new, I don't really want to have to manage a fire, um, yet I am shopping for an offset, but I just haven't pulled the trigger yet. Um, but for now, this has been working great. I really love it. It's super simple. You can turn it on, leave it. You don't have to um, you know, stoke the fire, add logs, nothing. It, it does it all for you. I love it. So, um, what I have done though, since pellet smokers don't put off a whole lot of smoke, I uh, ended up getting me one of these um, pellet tubes. And so you just fill it with the pellets that you're using, which I use Competition Blend. Um, fill it up and light this uh, when you're getting your smoker going. It just adds a little more smoke. So, um, but we're going to get this going. I'm going to start out at low temperatures. I like, I've like. i learned with this pellet smoker to start out very low. I turn it on at 180 and I will smoke this brisket for the first three hours. Um, so well, let's just get this thing going and, uh, and then we'll get that brisket on. Alright, so we have gotten the smoker up to temperature. Um, this has been sitting for probably, I don't know, 10 15 minutes, so it's time to put this bad boy on. Alright. That's what I like to do is I'm going to move, I'm going to put this far end over here as I can. Not right there. What I like to do is I have this probe system that I use by Grill Eyes. It's really awesome. It's Bluetooth. And it just connects to your phone. And so I like to use these probes to kind of help me manage the temperature. So I'll stick one in the point. And then I'll come over here and I'll stick one Inside the flat. Alright. What we're gonna do is now just let it sit. I'm gonna let it smoke for th at least three hours without looking at it. And in three hours what I'll come out here and do, if I like where it's where it's at and the color, if it looks like things are starting to maybe get dry, I'll start spritzing it. And I use a spritzer 50% water, 50% apple cider vinegar. So I'll see y'all in three hours. Okay, so this brisket has been on for about three hours, and it's time to check it. Let's check and look and see what that bark looks like. Um, if it's starting to wear, uh, if it's starting to set and it's um, where I like it to be, I'm gonna start spritzing it. So let's take a look at it and uh, see if it needs to uh, be spritzed. Good. I don't need to spritz it yet. If I do, I'll do a light coat. Um, you know what? Let's just let's go ahead and do a light spritz on this bad boy. Look on this end; it's starting to. Okay. All right. Let's do a light spritz on this thing. Close it back up. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, come check it every, probably every hour, hour and a half. Um, spritz it when I need to, when I feel like it needs it. Um, it probably really didn't need to be spritzed then, but it's not going to hurt it to just give it a little bit of, um, a 
a little bit of moisture on that uh, that that point where it's starting to get uh, a little darker. Um, but I'm gonna, like I said, I'm gonna come out here every hour, hour and a half. I won't bring you along for that. But uh, right now it's sitting at 118 at, in the flat and one. 109 in the point, so we've still got a long smoke ahead of us. Um, so I will see you all when it is time to wrap this bad boy. <sighs> okay, well, I woke up at 4, it's 4 o'clock in the morning now. A little after now, but I woke up to, to check this brisket, give it a spritz, and a catastrophic failure has happened. I don't know what that is. I can only assume. I think it's one thing. Um, but I get out here, and it is um, on the dial mode where it gives the temperature. It has gone into a mode called H E R. But um, what I think is the only time this has happened before is when um, I forgot. I just got lazy and I didn't clean out the, um, the the drip pan thing that uh, you know I had a bunch of grease on it and it caught it made a grease fire and it got too hot but there's no signs of a grease fire um, it doesn't smell like it's burnt or anything like that um, and it just it, it, when it, that happened it just shut itself down and um, and then I just had to unplug it, plug it back in, and it started working again. Well, this time I get out here at four o'clock, and I don't know how. Obviously, I don't know how long it's been. This coat has been thrown, um, but the temperatures were still really good um, inside the smoker, and the meat temperature um, was at like one forty-five, I think. So it hadn't have been long. Um, but it threw this code, and so I came out here, I turned it off, unplugged it, turned it back on, and it started working fine. It started doing what it normally does. But, this time, smoke started coming out of the pellet hopper, where all the, hop the pellets are uh, held. Um, so, my only thing that I can think of is that the auger that feeds the pellets is jammed and not turning pellets and it's what is happening is it's it pellets have built up like maybe built up somewhere and it's catching the pellets in the auger on fire and the smoke is coming out of the out of the hopper I, I don't know so <sighs> Jeez. So what I've done is um, I have transported the brisket to the oven at 225 to finish this cook. So hopefully everything turns out as planned. Obviously I'm not going to get as much smoke, which these don't produce a whole lot of smoke anyways, these pellet smokers. So, um, I mean the flavor hopefully will be there um, so I've put it on um, a drip I've got a foil pan and on top of the foil pan I put like a, a drip like a I don't know what you call it I'll show you here in just a minute um, so it'll catch any drippings into the pan because it's on top you know I'll show you um, but hopefully it turns out okay um, I'm still planning on wrapping it and I'll wrap it at um, once it gets to probably 170, 175, this all depends on what happens in the oven, what the bark looks like, because the bark is pretty, pretty much set, but it's not as dark as I want it to be. I've never cooked a brisket in the oven, so I don't know what's going to happen, so, um, wish me luck, this is... What a nightmare, seriously. Well, here we go. Um, okay, so a little update. So I went and put the 
brisket in the oven um, while to, I thought I was going to finish cooking in there. Hell, I still may, but I don't know. We'll see. But what I did was I um, came back out here to the uh, to the pellet smoker and I um, kind of I took everything apart. I took the the grate out. I took the um, the grease pan um, out. Took the heat shield, like all the heat shields out, and I turned it on. And so what I noticed was that the pellets in the auger that feeds down into the little fire pit um, pellets were on fire inside that auger and um, so I was like okay well how am I gonna get because you know what happens is there's a blower fan in there and that blower fan is what feeds it oxygen um, and also turn and you know and there's also an auger motor that turns it so somehow that those pellets inside the auger got caught on fire and that blower fan was just keeping it fueled right and I have no clue how that happened um, so what I did was I took out all the pellets as much as I could anyways in this um, this pellet smoker of mine um, because it doesn't have a dump system in the bottom where you can just dump all your pellets out to change them to a different flavor um, and so I just took out as much as I could, kept everything out, and I turned it back on and cranked it to high, to the highest setting that it could go to is 450. And what, because I was hoping by doing that, it would turn that auger faster and get all those pellets that were on fire out of the, um, the auger tube. And well, it did and it worked um, so I uh, put everything back together um, kind of cleaned all the ashes around out and um, put it back down to uh, the setting of 250 and it was staying at a constant temperature of 250 so I ended up pulling the brisket out of the oven bringing it back out to the smoker because I want to try to still get as much smoke as I possibly can on this um, uh, to try to finish the cook in this thing I'm gonna obviously have to keep an eye out on it I don't know keep my fingers crossed I'm, I'm obviously gonna have to do some more diagnosing um, after this cook but I'm hoping that I can get through this cook um, and just pray that uh, everything turns out okay. So I will try to keep you all updated um, as the cook goes on, obviously. Um, if nothing else bad happens and everything look, is looking good, then I will bring you back for when, I, for when it's time to wrap. So wish me luck, everyone. I'll uh, see you here in a minute. <sighs> kidding me okay well there's something wrong with the smoker because I went and laid back down and uh, me laying there can't get my mind off of this grill you know is it running right is what you know so I laid there for 15 minutes and I was like oh, you know what I better go I better, better go check to see if everything's running right. You know, let's go check and see if the, the temperatures are right, you know, and if, if it's still feeding pellets and stuff like that. <sighs> no, it wasn't. Wasn't feeding any pellets. Um, came out here and the temperatures, the fan was still blowing. I could hear the, the motor, the mower blower, uh, the blower motor still running. Um, but the temperatures inside the grill had dropped down to 160 so um, I looked in there and couldn't see any glow from any kind of uh, pellets burning or anything like that so I just guess it decided it just didn't want to feed any more pellets so now I'm thinking maybe it is just the auger 
getting jammed and it just keeps getting jammed. I don't know if it's because of me setting it at 225, maybe it's just something at that setting that it doesn't like. I, I don't know, it's ridiculous. So, I had to go put it back in the oven. So I guess we're finishing uh, the cook in the oven. I will bring you back when I decide to wrap it, which should be, I'm hoping here, within the next uh, two hours, three hours. Um, I'm gonna probably wrap it at internal temperature around 175, give or take five degrees probably. Um, this has been frustrating. <laughs> uh, but, you know, I got a really good deal on this Z-Grill. It was before they became popular and was in, uh, you know, the you know big stores like Lowe's and stuff like that or wherever they're sold now. Um, I got a really good deal on it. And I've loved it so far. I really have. And this has just been one of the... This has been the first actual big malfunction that I've ever had. I haven't had any other malfunctions, honestly, other than that grease fire that I did, and that was my fault. Um, but yeah, I haven't had any malfunctions, and I've had it for a couple years now, two, three years. So it's done me really well. I guess I should just keep up the maintenance on it and keep it clean more. I, um, I assume this is probably my fault. I, I don't know. I couldn't tell you. But... <clears throat> I'm going to go back to bed, and I will see you all when it's time to wrap. Alright, this is take like 500 just to wrap a brisket. Something keeps happening. Jeez. Okay, so the brisket, well, first off, what time is it? It's early in the morning. It is 725. Um... But the brisket's gotten up to about 165 degrees. Um, the bark is looking fantastic. I typically don't wrap until about 170, 175 when it's out on the smoker. But maybe since it's in the oven, things have changed a little. I don't know. Um, but it's looking like it's time to wrap. So um, I use butcher's paper to wrap. Some people wrap in foil. Some people do the foil boat method. Some people just... Uh, don't wrap at all. I use butcher's paper. Okay? And when I use butcher's paper, I like to put a little beef tallow on it. Um, I got this Wagyu beef tallow off Amazon, shipped to the house. Um, so I'm going to put a little bit of beef tallow on it. And then we will uh, wrap it up and get that temperature up to, well, probably about 201, maybe 202 and then let it rest. So let me go get that brisket and let's get this bad boy wrapped. Okay, what I've done is I've spritzed this paper, kind of give, be, let it be a little more malleable, I guess, if that's the right word. Uh, I'm gonna take a little of this Beef tallow. Do some right here. side for now. Okay. What I'm going to do move this back a little. I'm going to grab this brisket. So this is meat side up or uh, fat, fat cap up. I always like to keep my fat cap up. I like to keep, a, keep that up at all times when I'm cooking. 
thing about wrapping is you want this to be tight. Keep it tight. Keep it tight. Okay. Alright. So, right now, that cap is up. down. Fat cap is up. That'll be perfect. Now, let's go put this back in the oven. I'll see you when it's done. So I unfortunately lost all my audio in this clip. Um, but I ended up um, pulling the brisket when it hit about 201 internal temperature. And I ended up just letting it rest um, in an oven that was set at 160 degrees um, until I took this over to my buddy Andy's house uh, where we were having the pool party and uh, decided to start slicing it up. It ended up turning out phenomenal. So juicy. Um, the tenderness was, was almost spot on. It could have cooked just a little bit longer, as you can see here, um, on, it's got a good bend and it's not breaking under its, um, own weight, but it is, uh, when you pull it apart, it's just not pulling, um, apart as easily as I would have liked, but the flavor of it was absolutely phenomenal it turned out great i appreciate everyone that came along for this video if you like these kind of videos please let me know in the descriptions below and i'll keep doing them if you're new to the channel please consider subscribing and press that like button i really appreciate it until next time latest on the minjay